Uh, I forgot to mention before, but we'll go ahead and do it now. Uh, I'm actually going to move the um, YAML files, VR1 and VR2. I'm going to move them over to Etsy, where um, they kind of belong. And the reason is um, just to keep them in the right place. Uh, they, that's kind of where they belong. If you notice when we were going to save the file, uh, by default it throws it in Etsy. So we're just going to move our, our config files over there. We're going to do the same with branch two. Okay. All right, next part. Uh, from here, we don't actually use a script to configure this next part. We're actually just going to edit a YAML file directly. So we actually need to go to the cap2 folder. The cap2 folder is where we keep the YAML files that are the configurations for our clients and servers, and also where the PCAPs themselves are kept. So. T-Rex is really just a PCAP uh, replayer. So we've got all the PCAPs for the different applications in this folder, and then the YAML files, which we use um, to kind of rewrite on the fly the details of the PCAP, um, play at a certain rate, uh, so many connections per, uh, per second, and uh, source and destination IPs. So let's jump right in and look at that, uh, what, what a YAML file looks like that. So let's look at, uh, let's see, say sfr.yaml should give us a good mix of stuff. And because it's quite long, we'll go ahead and pipe it to less so that we can kind of see it a page by page. So you can see here at the top, the first thing we're looking at is the details of the packet generator. So the traffic generator. Um, you can see that you can specify, and in fact, you need to specify where where's the subnet where my clients live, and specifically, you know, how many kind of what IP address range can I use for my clients? And the, the same is true for your servers. And uh, so I mentioned earlier that you know, based on how your network is configured and and how the traffic is flowing through your network, you have to account for the emulated clients and servers and where they live. Uh, and how to get to them. So this is this is what that is. And we're going to configure this. Uh, the clients per gigabyte. We're going to say, you know, do you want 100 clients? Do you want 50 clients? How many total clients do you need? Um, what is the minimum number of clients? And then if if you want to do masking, um, you can do that. So you can skip. Say if you use this whole you know class C, you could set up a mask where you could skip certain. Uh, ranges or, or do every third or, or something like that. Um, the cap info is actually where we are specifying which PCAPs we're replaying and then how quickly. So the CPS is our connections per second. Uh, the IPG is our inner packet gap. That's, this is, that's in milliseconds. And the RTC is of course our round trip time. And I believe the W is weight meaning how uh, by default, I think they're all of the same weight, but you can tell it to do one more than other, for example. Um, I will say from experience that the default settings of this particular YAML file, which gives you a really good mix of, of uh, applications, is very heavy. So my suggestion is for a lab environment, you can either comment out some of the PCAPs that are not interesting to you. For example, maybe you don't need uh, a 250k RTP stream, maybe 160 is fine, or something like that. Uh, maybe you're not interested in SMTP for this, or Citrix, so on and so forth. Uh, or you can actually edit the connections per second down if you still want that mix. It just depends on what you're trying to test. So for our purposes, I'm actually going to copy the SFR YAML file. Um, because that's a, it's a pretty good mix, and I'm going to call it vr one dcyaml Now, um, obviously this is not exactly the same YAML file as the one for the configuration, even though it bears the same name. So uh, obviously they can't coexist in the same uh, place, but you generally leave the YAML file for the actual PCAP replay here with the PCAPs. So, uh, now that we've copied that, let's go ahead and edit it. And I'm not going to waste time with the second one. I'm just going to make it exactly the same. So here we can edit it. And we'll say this is our branch one. So again, our emulated clients here are going to be 
dot eleven dot zero as the start, and ten dot ten dot eleven dot two five five as the end. So we'll we'll generate clients within that entire class C. And then for the server side, who are they trying to get to? They're trying to get to ten dot one dot ten, or sorry, eleven dot zero two. 10.1.11.255. So you have an entire uh, class C's worth of clients and servers talking. Now, I usually adjust this downward. Again, we are in a lab, and so there's no reason to kill our network, uh, even if it is virtual. So I, I usually adjust this down to say 30, you know, uh, say minimum clients, 20. Uh, and then from here, I mostly leave this alone except for adjusting the CPS. I'm fine with the with the uh, apps it chooses to send, but I want to adjust it way down. So say here, you know, twelve, uh, three. I, I don't I don't like it to go above say fifteen or twenty just because there's so many apps. Again, if you want to really bring it down to just a few apps, you can do that. And then you can probably increase the connections per second at that point. But the idea is to keep the uh, keep in mind the resources that we're allocating from the T-Rex to send this much traffic into the network. We're not scale testing here. We're just trying to get a good uh, mix of flows of different applications so that we can test our policies. So let me just you know, again, edit this down a little bit, say six, and, and it's not really necessary that we uh, just send this much into the network. So notice that, you know, 2,400 DNS requests per second seems a little high to me. So I'm just gonna say uh, 15. It's really not that important. Um, in fact, I'm probably over, uh, I'm probably over um, correcting, to be honest. I probably doesn't need to be this slow either. But again, we can test our policy with a, a single packet, really. We just have to be able to, to, to get it into the network and have it be recognized with the DPI engine. But, you know, let's, let's get a little bit more traffic than that. So here we go. We'll say, you know, 20, you know, uh, 11, and say 15. All right, so we've adjusted that. We're gonna save it. That's our new YAML file, and the last thing we're going to do is um, duplicate that. Rather than redo that, we're just going to duplicate it for branch two. That YAML. Okay. Make sure we have both of them there. They should be. Uh, let's see. Do we see them? Well, I am blind. Yeah, there. Uh, okay, so here are the YAML files. Okay, and at that point, we're basically done um, from a configuration perspective. We've configured our emulated clients and servers. We've configured the T-Rex itself on how it's gonna talk to the network to send that traffic. And now what we need to do is just to check our network to make sure that sources and destinations will be able to reach each other. Let's do that next. Uh, actually, before we get started on checking out the network, there is one more thing I need to do. Um, some of you might have already caught it. Uh, I only caught it while reviewing. So I did copy branch one to DC YAML to branch two to DC YAML, but there is a change I need to make, and that's of course the emulated clients and servers. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so um, for branch two, they're going to start, uh, the clients are going to start at 10.20. dot, is it 11? I'm not actually sure that's true. Let's look at the, uh, it's 10.10.22 going to 10.1.22. So actually the clients are 10.10.22 in this case. So 22 and 22. And then of course in the data center, the servers are 10.1.22 and 10.1.22 also there. 
So we're going to leave that alone. Um, everything else will be the same in terms of the mix of traffic that we're sending. So um, that's important as we move forward into checking our network to make sure that our sources and destinations will be able to reach each other. Um, because of course we really have this port pair as well, which goes uh, branch two. So let's look at our Eve topology and just make sure that that's set up correctly. Okay, um, let's see. So what, what do we need to look at? We need to look at, well, I've got a lot of stuff open here. Let's look at, let's start with branch one, switch one. So in branch one, we have, uh, well, let's see what we have. We're running, or should be running, EIGRP with our uh, CSR router. It looks like we are. We've got some external routes being learned from the data center and from the other branch as well. And then of course we have our connected interfaces. Now, from a traffic generation perspective, what are we interested in? We're interested in making sure that we can get to the emulated servers. So this being branch one, our clients want to get to uh, for, let's see, 10.1.11.0, okay? That's the emulated servers that live in the data center. So that looks good to me. Uh, they have a route for it. You know, hopefully the routing will, will work and it'll get to the network to it. Um, let's look at branch two, see how branch two looks. From branch two's perspective, uh, we're looking at the same thing. In this case, they're interested in getting to 10.1.22.0, which is the emulated server environment. Um, so that looks right. And then I guess we should go to DC Core and make sure that the traffic uh, for the branches is there. So let's take a look. Now I'm in the DC, we're using BGP. So let's take a look. So 10.10.11, that's branch one's emulated clients, and 10.20.11, that's branch two's emulated clients. So from a routing perspective, this looks good. Like they, they um, in theory, have reachability across the network. Everybody knows about the routes that we're taking. So really the next thing we need to do is just go ahead and send some traffic and see uh, if, it, if the T-Rex fires up and works. And then of course, if we're uh, both sending and receiving. So let's do that next. 